whole world was falling apart at that time and I, the ground was just felt like opening up beneath me and I didn't have a clue what to do. So I'm sitting in my room and I'm, I'm saying I hate myself and I don't know why. No matter how hard it is, you will move on from it, you'll learn from it and your story will inspire others. Andy's Man Club was something that I discovered actually where as my dad was, was ill because Andy's Man Club was actually kind of founded in like around April 2016 or the It's Okay to Talk campaign was which you know was, was coupled with Andy's Man Club so you know I kind of seen like a few of my mates sharing It's Okay to Talk um, pictures on, on Facebook and at that time I was kind of showing my dad saying look you know people saying it's okay like look at these people saying all this stuff he still couldn't see it, you know, he was like, no, like, no one knows what I'm going through, no one can relate to me. But, uh, I've never really kind of spoke about, I might have said it once or twice, and his man coming, I, you know, used to go out on, on a negative mind. I kept saying to myself, I'm going out because I'm enjoying myself, like, drinking at uni. I wasn't, I wasn't at all, I, I was doing it to mask again, all that stuff, and it's really weird now, I think about it, I was coming home, I was playing my dad's like, favourite songs, I was crying, I was, I was that's, you could put this on the video, but I was like, I was self-harming about five months after, for God's sake. Like, why? Why was I doing that? And I, it's, like, and that happened for about three months continuously. And it, that, I was like, do I really want to end up how my dad was? And, and that was my rock bottom, I think. I'd just like to commend uh, our uh, coaches, Matt Callan, Steve Gartland, who I think have done a tremendous job this season for us. My dad was, um, I mean, I can't put into words to be honest, like how much he meant to, to me and to everyone else, like all my mates and family. He was such an approachable man. He had time for everyone. You know, if someone came to me with like a problem, you know, like give like his 110% attention. He was a talented rugby player. So he played kind of semi-professionally at Rochdale Hornets, Swinton and Oldham. And then towards the end of his career, he, he played at Rochdale Mayfield as well. And as well as playing, he also coached my team, you know, from the age of six to like under 17s. So he kind of like nurtured, you know, these kids in, into adults and men and, and kind of coached them both on and off the field. Yeah, I spent a lot of time with him through rugby, to be honest. And it was, you know, I, obviously we bonded at home as like a father-son relationship, but then it was also this coach-play uh, relationship, you know, just this kind of person that, I looked up to and will always look up to for the rest of my life. You know, watching him play rugby and stuff, you know, he'd, he'd literally be taking the ball and, you know, he'd get injured and physically injured and he'll get back up and he'll just carry on playing. And me watching my dad like that for that must be how he deals with things mentally as well. You know, he gets these mental knocks and, and then he'll just kind of deal with them and, and move on from that. And I've, I could never have been more wrong, to be honest. It wasn't this just invincible rock that I, that, you know, I kind of imagined it. He was vulnerable, he needed help, and he had all these things in his head that he wanted to talk about, but because he's kept him in for that long, it just, it just overwhelmed him, and, you know, that was the first time I've ever seen my dad cry. So I used to take him there kind of, um, you know, just to clear his head and just to get out in nature and just build perspective and, but like, he just never really wanted to speak as much. You know, it, it helped him, but I think that it kind of, it must have just done like masked still this deep rooted problem because he weren't really addressing it. He said, look at this. He said, look at this house that I've got. I said, look at my beautiful family. Look at the job that I've got and, and like the career that I've had through rugby. He said, but something's not right inside. Something's not right. And that was a, a big thing. And, and that's kind of when people started to, you know, he needs help. Yeah, I've seen it loads of times at Andy's Man Club where people come in and will say like, you know, I've got everything but something's not right inside and, 
you know it's just getting to the um, getting to the bottom of that and I think people have to start being true to themselves to to actually really understand um, and and kind of just step back a minute and just kind of reflect and and if they've got something that they need to talk about and talk about it because if my dad would have done it sooner I mean even if he would have done it then at that point it would have been really difficult for him of course it would but I mean definitely as soon as he would have kind of talked about it to you know other people like you know other blokes or or, or more family members it might have kind of connected on that other level and someone else might have said you know what I feel I feel the same um, and as soon as that connection is made you know that's when you realise that you're not alone like this is where like the rugby team training and stuff like the gym and what have you but Obviously, like, this is also the place where my dad took his wife. I, I, I never thought that day would ever, 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 ever come at all. It's still like a very, very, very hard thing to speak about because, you know, it, it was one of them where it was like me and my dad at, at home. We just went shopping in the morning at Aldi. Just did our kind of like weekly shop. And we got back home and we did a bit of like just stuff around the house. And, you know, he said, oh, I'm going to go to the gym now. And I was like, you know, I'll come with you. You know, like, we'll, we'll go to the gym together. I said, oh, no, it's fine. Like, you know, because he said, oh, you know, maybe some buddies want to get back. Which, you know, if your dad said that to you, you kind of believe that he's going to come back. You know, it's like an hour past. Um, I didn't hear anything from him, but I thought, you know, trust and you know, I text him there was no reply but then I, I got a call like you know a few minutes later but I had no answer like he, he rang me but no one said anything on the other lines so I was like oh shit it's like panicking then like what on earth is going on so I got in my car straight away and I drove to what was pure gym and I pulled up at Mayfield as well and I asked them said is there any kind of uh, have you seen um, this specific car uh, they pulled up, no, 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 we've not seen anything. My whole world was falling apart at that time and I, the ground was just thought, like opening up and beneath me and I didn't have a clue what to do. Me and my mum and my brother like um, all got together and you know we reported him as missing and you know and then the police went on lookouts and stuff. So they said, all right, you know, we'll go on like a lookout around Mayfield. So they went round and stuff and, and obviously I didn't found him there and you know the, the police came into our house after and sat us down and, and told us, and I just remember, like, I just remember sat there, pulled like, just chunks of my hair out, um, like, you know, this, honestly, I can't even describe, like, the, the, the pain, it's more than pain, it's absolutely unbearable. Um, and I just know that if my dad would still be here now, he'd have looked back at that day and he'd have gone, I'm so glad I didn't do that. I'm so glad he held on. But that's something that we've all got to live with now and I think that's, it's all about changing it for other people. Question number four, um, if you're on a desert island, what three things uh, would you have there? You know, so bearing in mind you've already got water and, and food and stuff, so like what other things would you like there? And my answer to that would be a bit of a deep one, but you know, obviously like my dad, that'd be you know, it'd be nice to kinda of catch up with him there and you know, kinda of see what going through his head, you know, um, and you know, to try and see if we could have um, helped him in some way. I sat down for my first counselling session with with this new woman, um, and it was it was a weird thing really because I think that was the actual starting point of, of my full recovery is, is well, like, well like the next step in, in my full recovery. She said, you know, how come you've come at this point? <laughs> and I sat down and I was like, because I'm sitting in my room and I'm, I'm saying I hate myself. And I don't know why. I had all this emotional strain and, and, all, and all this kind of burden in my head and of being the last person to see my dad before he came to this gym. I was the last person and that, that weighed heavy on me and that weight's become less now again through talking how powerful it is. 
the biggest weight I could have ever carried in my life has is, is kind of been reduced that much more now and um, I forgave myself for it, which again was a big thing. I was so annoyed with my dad, you know, as it, it's, it's were, you know, other people, um, and you're so confused by it, you know, why did you, why did you leave us? So I think, you know, all that weight and why was I the last person to see him? What could have I had done? So my message is to you now, if you know someone that's going through something or if, or if you yourself are going through anything, no matter how big or small, I, re just, I, I can't encourage you enough just to please, you know, talk about it and, and build these connections. And, you know, we've got a group in Rochdale and his man club. You can come down, any man um, over the age of 18 is, is welcome to come down. Type Nandis Man Club on Google, have a look at the website. You've got clubs all over the country and email info at andysmanclub.co.uk and you'll get all the information you need there. I'm really looking forward to seeing you down at the group and we can make a difference and we will make a difference to you.